Good morning guys. It is an early Tuesday, so it's time to whip out another one of these videos. Uh, I'm getting this one done early today. Sun's not even up yet. Because uh, I want to try to squeeze in some extra time getting some Mass Effect uh, gameplay in. So I'll be streaming that shortly. Uh, probably in an hour or two I'll start that off. And uh, hopefully get that game over with soon. <laughs> but... Uh, let's, let's look at some input, input mapper stuff here, huh? So, I'm gonna switch over here. And, uh, act, quite a bit of stuff has changed. Um, finished some stuff off, polished some other stuff. Uh, so we'll go through that here. Um, so, we're gonna start off here at the front screen. Uh, you might notice down here at the bottom I have a CPU and memory usage meter. Um, that is mo mo was mostly for me, just uh, for development, just so I can see, you know, how the program is behaving. Um, this is actually the CPU and memory uses of just this program, not the total. Uh, but I might keep it in there um, and tweak it around a little bit. It's a it's a low cost call. Uh, these values are being computed by Windows already, so this program is actually just fetching those values. So. Um, it really doesn't eat up any, uh, any CPU or anything to do to calculate that stuff. So I might keep it in there. Um, unless somebody says it's ugly, get rid of it. Um, let's see. Uh, you'd notice that the CPU does fluctuate. It does jump up, um, about every, once every five seconds. And that is because some of the controllers that this, uh, program detects now, um, they don't send notifications through Windows like devices are supposed to. Um, so I actually have to pull once every five seconds to see if uh, that device is present. And if it is present, if it's still sending data, if not, then get rid of it. So on and so forth. So that's why you see a little spike every, two, or every five seconds. And it, it's actually it's not noticeable and um, the priority of it's really low so if your computer is doing other stuff it won't freeze or hitch it up or anything because it's such a low priority that Windows will you know do this only if it's only if it has the spare cycles to do it so um, alright so let's hook up a controller here and we'll take a look at some of the new stuff um, for reference I'm using my DualShock 4 and I'm doing that through the Sony official dongle. Um, and keep in mind that you know we can uh, the program supports the uh, the PlayStation Move navigation controller, uh, DualShock 3, um, oh yeah. Xbox. I just got controllers all over my fucking desk. That's what my desk looks like now when I develop applications like this. It's just a fucking mountain of controllers, but. Um, I mean, it can support all kinds of stuff now, which is uh, cool. It opens it up to a lot more users. Um, so, let's take a look at some of the profiles. Uh, I got one that I started here. It's called Mouse Demo. Um, mapping has been cleaned up. Uh, I got the little lines now, which help, you know, differentiate, you know, what all this stuff is actually pointing to. Um, and... Actually, let's just start a new one for demonstration purposes. Load this up. New mouse demo. So, this is what it looks like by default. Um, everything's going to the controls you would expect it to. Um, but, uh, let's go ahead and map it. Um, like the other one was, but I'll actually walk through it here with you guys to keyboard and mouse controls. And I'm going to use Doom um, as my sample. I've been playing through that some. That's been my test platform for making sure all the controls are smooth and everything. So uh, We'll start with the right stick here, which is going to be our mouse for a mouse look. And we're going to go to mouse. And map these pretty much as you expect. Mouse, left. right and down uh, let's see right trigger is going to be our shoot 
which can be left click. You see I got the other clicks missing there. I just got to punch them in now that everything's working. Um, just got to add them. It's just clerical stuff for me pretty much. Uh, now the left stick is going to be our move, our WASD. But Doom has a shift uh, where you can run at like 90 miles an hour. Um, but we're going to go ahead and add that to the stick as well in like a two-stage kind of a throw. Um, if you throw it to a certain percent, it's going to be walk. If you throw it beyond that, it's going to be run. And that functionality is built in now. It used to be you have to do all kinds of complex macros for that. But if you go over here to our keyboard and you see, you know, got a nice little fancy pop-up keyboard that we can map stuff to. But above it, you also see a menu that says special. Go to special run modified and here's all of our options with the shift run modifier so we're going left here so that's going to be our a key i had to cheat and look up is going to be rw and then s So there we have all those in, and what it will do is if you actually throw it at full throw, it's going to hit the shift key automatically, and that way we get, you know, two levels of speed out of our stick, as opposed to just, you know, where we would map it to a keyboard, we would only get, you know, forward, back, left, and right. Um, now, another thing in Doom is the weapon selection, um, and a lot of other games that are keyboard and mouse only, where you actually have to hit numbers on the keyboard in order to select your different weapons. You can't cycle through them. Well, there's built-in functionality now where we can cycle through weapons. And Doom has seven weapons, one through seven. So we're gonna go over here, numeric cycle, and our D-pad up is gonna be cycle one through seven up. D-pad down is gonna be cycle one through seven down. And that'll just allow us to scroll through the weapons just as if we were, you know, selecting them in a natively controlled uh, program that allows, you know, regular controller input. Uh, so, only thing we're missing now is spacebar to open doors, and I'm going to map that to my X. And I believe I have everything we need here to play some Doom. Yep. All right, so new mouse demo, that's already saved. We don't need to select a driver because we're not actually mapping this to a controller, we're just mapping it to keyboard and mouse. So we can keep the driver blank and that'll keep the program, uh, the overhead for this controller low since it's not loading up that external driver and sending data to it uh, at a periodic rate. So we'll keep that blank and we'll go up here to our DualShock 4 controller and we're gonna select new mouse demo as the output. Now you see I'm getting some drift here on the right stick that I got my mouse mapped to. And that's, you know, not a flaw or anything. The other programs did that too. And that's just because the mechanical, uh, the mechanical little sensor for the, they're called pots. But uh, they don't center perfectly. Um, and you can't really expect them to. There's going to be a little flutter and fluctuation. So in order to counteract that, we got to add a tad bit of dead zone in. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this back to default just so my mouse doesn't move around on me when I try to do this. And we're going to come over here to the newly, newly implemented access configuration tab. Like I said, it's early. I've had one cup of coffee so far, so words are not working right now. But... Uh, let's see, we got our sticks, we got our triggers, and we can even granulate even further. You see this says left stick, right stick. We can even separate the, god damn it. We can even separate the right stick into the X and Y axis. Uh, by clicking this, you see we get X axis tuning, Y axis tuning, and we can separate that even further uh, to like the Y axis positive, the Y axis negative, or the X axis positive and negative, Y axis positive and negative, um, tons more, uh, granularity and functionality than the right, than the other input mapper had. Uh, you can really get in there and fine tune a lot of stuff, but all we really need is a little bit of dead zone. And 
and just a touch I don't know if you can really make it out there but it did add a tad bit of dead zone in there and that's all I really need to counteract these uh, mechanical pots as a matter of fact that might be a touch too much so I'm gonna back it off just a smidge um, there will be numer uh, numerical indicators for all of these sliders as well so you're not just sliding them in the blind and looking at the graph um, but let's see, for the mouse, I probably want to drop the sensitivity down some too. We'll go about there, and I do like a little curve on it as well. So that's what our mouse, is, our right stick is going to look like. And what this is, this vertical uh, separator here separates our input, negative and positive, And this horizontal uh, separator separates our output, negative and positive. So starting at zero, zero... Um, I know it's hard to picture a, you know, a 2D axis because this is only, you know, per throw. Um, so it's the, the, the little four quadrant doesn't really make a lot of sense um, until you think about it that this is, you know, input and output over time as opposed to actually X, Y values. Um, but anyways, so what this means is, you know, our input's going to change uh, as our input changes. Uh, this is our corresponding output, so that's how we get our curve in there and our dead zone and all. Yada, yada, yada. Um, it's easier just to actually play with the stuff to figure out what it means. But that's the best results for a mouse. So we're going to go ahead, go back over to new mouse demo, and no more drift. I uh, let go of the stick and it stops. Um, you can see the mouse moves really smooth. Um, I'm only recording at 30 frames a second, so I don't know how well it's picking this up. Um, but yeah, it's very smooth mouse movements. Excuse me, guys. Sorry about that. Oh. It's tough to record all this stuff in one take without sneezing or coughing or something in the middle. So, um, All right, so I think we're good to go here. We got our mouse... Uh, mapping set up, our keyboard set up. Um, everything here looks good. Um, oh, I will quickly, um, I did sort of show this off before, but I'll go ahead and hit on it again. Um, this is a little indicator saying that something happened. Uh, in this case, it's saying that it wasn't able to grab the controller for exclusive access. And unlike the other input mapper where you would actually have to stop the program and start it up again, blah, blah, blah. We can retry exclusive access here just by clicking the icon. Now it's going to flash red because it's not able to do it. Um, and that's because nothing actually changed. I haven't put that script into this program yet, which, uh, you know, get, which allows the exclusive access because Windows 10 is still fucked up. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to jump over here. I got my exclusive mode tool. I'm going to run that real quick. Even though this is completely unnecessary for Doom, I'm um, going to go ahead and go through this anyways. So I ran that. Um, there was no box or anything. Uh, it was, you know, ran silent. Um, so now I'm going to go back over here, and if I try to connect again, bam, it goes away. So now the controller is connected exclusively. Didn't have to quit the program or restart it or anything like that. So cool little feature. Um, all right, yeah, let's, uh, I actually, I'm assuming Doom will capture, um, good through this. I actually have never tried. If not, I'll edit this part out, and I'm talking to myself at that point. Okay, looks like it's capturing. If I could really, I could map um, keyboard controls so I could navigate the menu and everything as well. Uh, but I didn't do that, so I'm just going to do it like keyboard. Here we go. Uh, nice and smooth. Speed fast. Slow. It's not hitching. It's nice and smooth. Um, running. Movement. Yeah, movement. Pretty much. Oh, 
keyboard control. There's no keyboard control on the regular keyboard either. Oh. All right, so this is this is a silly, stupid thing for me. Um, I have software on this computer that allows me to control another computer, which is my streaming server over here. Um, and the software also, when the mouse is over on this other screen, it redirects off keyboard entry too. So this is an input mapper that's causing this. this is a, I should have shut that software down before I started. But here we go. Now the mouse is back on this screen. I've got the keyboard. There we go. There's our normal walk. I'm not throwing the stick very far. And there's our run if I throw it all the way. Okay, good. This controller won't send the mouse over and Yeah, it will. So I'm not actually going to be able to run through this level here because the mouse is going to be trying to go onto this on the screen. Again, that's not something you guys have to worry about. That's because I'm running a software on this computer called Synergy, which allows me to control computers remotely um, by just, you know, um, but yeah, keeping the mouse on this screen, I can still go through some of this stuff. Control's really good. Uh, other than the fact that Doom Guy likes to run at 90 miles an hour, um, perfectly controllable. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, get out of that but uh, it's about all I can really show off right now I think uh, I think I got everything there um, yeah all this really left for me to make sure that uh, I do to make this program probably ready for release is I got to get the macros working um, that should be too much uh, so yeah I think I'm making pretty good progress I can probably get a release out this month here um, get people to start playing around with this. So uh, it's going to do it for this week. I am going to start almost uh, as soon as I can get this video uploaded. I'm going to start streaming out some Mass Effect and you know try to get you know probably a good four hours or at least in there. Uh, try to get this damn game over with. Uh, so I'll see you guys later.